two of it, though. So. Okay. Okay. I may have forgotten to push the button. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we should. So maybe I should start over. <laughs> now we're now we're started. Okay. Off. <laughs> yeah. But this is a very professional program. Well, so you, this is Lindy Heim of the Wilmington Historical Society interviewing George William Gove in his home with his wife Jean here present, and we're going to have a, an informal conversation about his life. It happens to be November 15th on a Friday, 2012. 16th. Is it really? Oh, poop. It's November 16th, 2012. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And you were talking about where you were born, which is a good place to start. Yes, I was born July 20th, 1925. Oh, I put that on my thing. July 20th. And unless you folks have lost the picture, you have my picture down there. At the, the Historical Society. Right. It was at the Grange Hall, and I belonged to the Wilmot Grange. Ah. And I come out of the Army, and I, I gave them a, a picture of the, of the, uh... Well, while you were in the service, they had all the servicemen's pictures in, in on the hall. In the hall of the, the Grange. Grange. Oh, nice. And then they took them down. Yeah. Where do you think they went? No, I took... The, 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 the Grange, when the Grange took all the pictures down, they returned them to most of the, the everybody, but they didn't return mine, oh. and because I told them that uh, that I didn't need I didn't need it back, I was and they, the Grangers asked me if, if they if it was ours, they gave it to the Historical Society. Oh. Nice. And I said, by all means. Well, then we probably do have it, and it probably was Mark Davis, the president president of it the could have been. organization. It, it could have been him. And you, uh, the Grange you speak of was is now the the town hall. Uh, they were in the town hall. Uh, that was the Grange building over in Wilmot Center. Wilmot Center was right. the Grange when I joined it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And your birthplace was uh, half a mile up the road from the Grange Hall. Uh, the road that goes up to, I don't was know. Was it the North Wilmot Road? No, it's the road that goes up to Pedrick Road. 4A, yes. Okay, Four, up, up 4A. 4A, towards Springfield. Right, right, it's about a half a mile. Okay, from and Wilmot I, Center. And that was the picture I, I had that, uh, that I brought down to you. Uh, That's wonderful. Yeah, right, but I didn't leave that picture. I still have that. Okay. You could, you took a picture of it and... Oh, yes, I did. Right. Yes, yes, yes we did that do that. Our, that was our birthplace. Well, many of the gold children. Is, it, is the house still standing? No, no, no. No. They took it down and uh, sold, sold the land and they, the land is... Uh, I don't know who, who owns the land now, but uh, I believe... Uh, the someone, house this side of the bridge, probably. It's still... No, they... It's, the, I don't think the place next to the bridge own, owns any part of that land. I think it, it was somebody else that, that bought over over across the brook. And that land my father owned over the brook. Oh. Uh, just a short distance. And, uh, and I don't know who did buy that, but they, he put a bridge, he put a bridge in uh, uh, was somebody put the bridge in so that they could build some houses in there, but the town wouldn't allow it. Oh, so, good luck. So he was in a hassle with them about the about that. And well, that was Ken Clark Jr., wasn't it? That was I guess right it was. Wasn't it Ken Clark Jr., I heard, owns that land that's across? He's, yes, he's bought up a lot of land in the area. Yeah, so. well, he... That way and down towards Eagle Pond. Yeah, I guess he bought that land over back, and he, Maybe. but he wanted to. Uh, uh, they got in a little hassle with, with the people over on Pinnacle Road. That uh, wanted to, but uh, they wanted to close the, have the road go, in the into their road over there, and I guess, so. Uh, Ken wanted it too, but the people over there didn't want it tied into the. So they, 
So therefore, he he never did any building in there. But, so, there, uh, but so there used to be a Gove Road up through there, wasn't there? Yeah, the Gove Road, somewhere in a pinnacle section, that uh, uh, up in the back of the pinnacle, where you uh, they came from over in the pinnacle across to 4A, but uh, I don't know where the road was. Mm. Well, we'll have to look on an old map. That sounds kind of fun. Uh, maybe. So where did you uh, go to school? I went to the, the little school that, that is the library now. Oh. And I went into the library, and I said, I come in to see my old school. And she said, all oh, this, the librarian said, well, it's not a school now more. It's a library. And I said, well, what did you do with the blackboards and all of those? I said, well, how come you took this, all that stuff down? Because uh, I, uh, I was kind of pleased with that building. It was a nice I, slate, slate blackboards. Oh, well, we, they nice. really were nice, yes. And then you probably remember the old stove there. And yeah, the old stove. Uh, I was, uh, I was, I went there eight years. Wow. They had three different teachers. Do you remember their names? Uh, my first teacher, first grade teacher, was Miss Granite. And she married, uh, she, she was, uh, well, teachers couldn't be married back then. Wow. They, if they were teaching school, they had to uh, give up teaching. They got married. But they got married. Right. Interesting. And uh, but Miss Grant, I uh, did get married. Uh, I don't know what year, but she was she was married to Morris Ford in Danbury. Uh huh. And her name was Martha. Martha Ford. Wow. And, uh, Martha Grant, I. Martha Martha Grant, I. Yes. How do you think you spoke Grant, I? I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> Oh, okay. We don't need. And who was your second teacher? And uh, my second teacher was, I, Mrs. Atwood. And uh, she was, uh, she wasn't. She, I don't, don't think she was Teresa Atwood, but she could have been. Okay, but she was a Mrs. Or was she a Mrs. Later? Uh, she was. A, Mrs. Atwood was the one that, I think she was, she was already married. I, I'm not sure of that. Yeah, whether might, she, the rules might have changed or not. Yeah, yeah that's right. Hard to tell. Right. How about your third teacher? My third grade teacher and, until, and, and my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh -huh. and eighth was, was, uh, now I, It's always hard to try and remember. Is that the one that went crazy? Yes. <laughs> In the middle of the street down the Keene? Oh. What was her name? You told me. Well, we can come back to that. You probably will think of it. Uh, I think yeah, of that, it. probably sometime in the night. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I graduated from grammar school and I went to Andover High School. Uh huh. A lot of kids did, didn't they? In, in the, 1940 to 44, I was supposed to be in that class. And uh, in fact, Victor Phelps, who was there. Yes. Okay, he was my, he was in the, in the same class as I was at high school. He was the uh, president of the, of the four, Four or four class, four years. Uh, he's, he was president from the, f the first. Uh, was he first, class president? Right. Yeah, he was the president of the class of 1944, from 40 to 44, and he didn't go into the service. No. No. Uh, I went and I left the school. I left in 1943. He went into the service. And I uh, uh, World War Two. World mm -hmm. War Two, and, and uh, I was drafted in the army, and I went to uh, uh, 
we took basic training down in Camp Shelby, Mississippi, and we went to Tennessee on maneuvers, and then we went from there, we, we went to, uh, to New Jersey Camp, New Jersey, I can't think of the name of it, the New Jersey Camp, but that's where we went to, uh, and then we went across on the on the boat to, to England, and from England we crossed the English Channel on Christmas Day of 1944. Hmm. And what number of son were you that went into the service? There were five gold boys in World War Two. What right. number were you? I was the fourth one. I went in. A, I went ahead of Paul because Paul was was working. And uh, uh, he he was he got a dis got a dis uh, discharge. He got a uh, deferred. Deferred. Mm -hmm. yeah, he got deferred for for one year or something like mm -hmm. that. And then then he, they drafted him after that. And he he went in a year after I did. Can I get a point? Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. Should take the phone in the other so, room. So how did you? Um, how did that, then where did well, you go from there? I went to, yeah. to England yeah. and we crossed the English Channel in 1944 on Christmas Day. And we landed in La Havre, France. And from La Havre, La Havre France, we, uh, uh, we, after we got out of the boat, got out of the boat and had to hike uh, 10 miles in a snowstorm in a, a fort. I don't know what the temperature was at the time, but uh, we do know that the, it was, we were wet from getting off the boat, and then we had to hike 10 miles. And uh, it, that was, uh, it was kind of hard on us, but we, that when the battalion commander told us that we had to line our tents up in a straight line, we said, the heck with you. We're not doing, stopping doing that. Here it was in the night, middle of the night, and uh, we just lined them up the best we could, and then the next day we, we from there, uh, we moved on up through France, and we went across France into, uh, uh, we were, over in the Nancy, France, in that area, and, and we uh, laid minefields, and we uh, uh, let's see what else. We, uh, the biggest job that we did was the bridge across the Rhine River. That is a big job. Yeah, and uh, uh, just just a minute, we can stop this. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you the picture out here. We'll go look at this. Okay, we'll go look. We can do this. We're just gonna follow you. So you were in the service, how long were you abroad? Uh, we was over there for two and a half years. Well, that's a long go. Right, here's, here's where we landed. Here's a map of, of where we went in Germany and, and overseas. Uh -huh. You see, we landed over here in, in England, uh, up here, up in here, uh -huh. in England, and then we come down to, to uh, this section of England that was in uh, South, wait a minute. Let's see if I can see it. Southampton, uh -huh. and we went down to we're down here to, as we crossed the English Channel, and then we went across the France over here, and this this takes us up into here where we went into the uh, Rhine River, uh -huh. and we uh, hope it shows that. Let's see. That, uh, yeah, that shows where the Rhine River is. We crossed, we built that Rhine River. It shows us 
putting the uh, bridge across the Rhine River. This would be, this would be the Rhine. No, that's the Elbe River. The Rhine River was down down here. Okay. And uh, what was the kind of unit you were involved in then? Was it obviously you were engineers? Engineers. Yeah. We're engineer department. And Do you remember the number or the name? Two hundred and forty fourth. Do you ever get together? Yes. Well, well, we was, we went across together, and uh, uh, we all came. All of us was uh, almost the whole battalion was. Uh, 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 together, and we, I don't recall how many was that we lost in the, yeah. during the war, but there was a, a few, excuse me, uh, but anyway, we, we ended up at the Elbe River, uh -huh. and from the Elbe River, uh, after the war had ended, then we came back down into France and, and did the uh, uh, of Belgium and that area, and did uh, uh, just a uh, re rehab uh -huh. and uh, built things back uh, up. Yeah, yeah. Right. which must have been much more satisfying than oh yes yes yeah. Destru we, right yeah. destruction yeah. yeah good for you so, and then when I, I say uh, I was I was discharged in 1946 on uh, the. Uh, the 13th day of April. Not that you were counting. Pardon me? <laughs> of course you were counting the days. Uh, yes, we were, we were counting getting home from, from uh, the Army, right. Yeah, you I, bet. I was discharged on the 13th of April. Right. And uh, uh, And you came home to Wilmot. Came to, came home to Wilmot, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are two cultural shocks, both going and coming, I'm sure. Right, and uh, we, uh, uh, <coughs> let's we'll go back in sure, here. Sure, okay. sure. Well, thank you for showing me the map. That was very interesting. And how, does your unit get together with a union, a reunion at uh, all? We only had one reunion. Uh-huh. And I don't remember what year that was. We had it down in Virginia, in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. Oh, nice. And... We we all I don't recall how many we had in the, the in our group. No, but it, it must have been a pretty good showing. Yeah, we had a pretty good turnout. Must have been glad to see each other. Good turnout for yeah. for for waiting so long. It mm -hmm. was I believe it was. Uh, uh, see, it. We, I got discharged in in, uh, in uh, twenty. I got discharged in April, mm -hmm. and I went to work for Mr. Little in New London, Chevrolet Garage, in 1946, and uh, uh, and I worked for him from from then until well, my, maybe it's not maybe it's, well anyway I worked seven years for for, for him as a mechanic. Meantime, my wife, we, we had, I had met my wife uh, before I was in the Army. And, and in fact, she, I met her when she was 13 years old. Oh, my, my, my. And, yeah, yeah. And, and her maiden name was? Her maiden name? Brewster. Okay, well, her, so her full maiden name? Uh, Richard, I mean, uh, Jean Gertrude Gertrude Brewster. Okay, B R E W S T E R. B R E W S T E R. And where did you hail from? She, she lived right in Grafton Center. Oh, okay. When my oldest son now lives at the place where she was, where her father and mother lived. They and where you grew up then? Um, from the time I was five till I was 19, went in nurses training. Oh. 13 years I lived there. Oh. Were you in doing hospital work with uh, Mrs. Miss Walters? Uh, she and I both went to the deaconess, but not at the same time. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. she was a deaconess grad. And so yes, I thought I remember her saying that. I, I graduated 60. I'm older than she. Oh, I see. Not much. No. Oh. 
but I graduated 60 years ago. Okay. So just had a 60th get together this fall. What fun! Yeah. Yeah. But there's only four of us. So if you so met when you were 13, how does I, that happen? I'm well. I I was living with my oldest brother, and uh, I was up there during the summer. And she lived. Jean lived a, a half a mile up the road, and and had a bicycle. She she had a bicycle. <laughs> she go down to the Grafton to the swimming pool, and of course I didn't have a bicycle, but I was go down there to the to the swimming in the afternoon, and and I met as I say I met her through my brother and his and his wife and and their little baby niece. Yeah. And I used to stop in to see. So when were you married? We were married, married 60 years ago. Just about right on the nose, like 60 years? Well, right. Is this well, your 60th anniversary this year? Yeah, last February, February 3rd. Very big. Yeah. 61 years. Yeah, we, got, yeah. we went together for six years. Wow. After he came out of the service, we went together. And he drove me to the deaconess and brought me home and took me back and and she and was dated all that time, and uh, then we became engaged. And then I said, well, I'm, I'm sick of going out on dates and everything. Let's get married after I finish nurses' training. So a week afterwards, February 3rd, we were married 60 years ago. Wow. And she was, a, she was the instigator of my going back to high school and getting my diploma. Is that right? Right. She wanted you to finish. Right. I went back to So we graduated from high school. He's five years older than I am, but we graduated from high school the same year. Oh. Right. 1948. I graduated from Andover, and, and she graduated from Canaan. Right. And I, I talked to uh, I talked the class that I, I graduated with into changing the baccalaureate so that I could go to Canaan to her baccalaureate, oh, well, and uh, sure. so they moved it up. Uh, uh, I think it was a, an hour earlier in, in, at Andover, and I had a little uh, thirty-eight coupe at the time. I believe I had that then, and uh, so I, I, uh, I would, I would. would after the baccalaureate, I'd get, I didn't stay in the line with the reception line at the baccalaureate. I got into my car and headed for Canaan. <laughs> That's great. So, so I, was, I made that, that, and then we... Uh, he chased me for years. Sounds like it. And I told right. him, he yeah. asked me to marry him, and I said, No, I enjoy going out with you, but I'll never marry you. Oh. But he wouldn't give up. Sounds that way. No. So, so, I, so you've had a long, wonderful life. Right, yeah. right. Did, after you married, did you have some children? We had five. Oh, you had a lot of children. We had, yeah. uh, we had, we had six. Here they are up here. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, six I'm going to a little picture of that, because that's pretty wonderful. That's, they were all six months old when those pictures were taken. Oh, isn't that swell? So, did you have a set of twins there? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Twin girls. Wonderful. Yeah. Sorry, you lost one. Yeah, we lost Andrew. Yeah. So and we had four boys. Okay. And then we had the twin girls. Wow. And then ages are from 58. The oldest one is 58 now, and the youngest twins, are, they're 43. My, my. So they're, they're pretty spread out. They certainly are. Now, now to get back to, uh, I finished high school in 1948, and I stayed with Mr. Little until until 1949, uh, I believe it was. Well, Mr. Little oh. died. Mr. Little died yeah. when you were working there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, only about seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not nine years, I guess, I worked at the Chevrolet garage, but I... Uh, we got married in, in 52, and we had a little house down in Elkins, and 
But yeah, we bought a house. We bought the house, but uh, we didn't. She didn't like the yeah. London Hospital because it was such a, a old hospital. She wanted to get where she she would get more. Uh, well, working I was used to the deaconess in Boston. You, the student nurses did everything. If they walked off the floors, there would be no mm -hmm. nurses. Mm -hmm. And then to come to a small small mm -hmm. hospital with women a lot older than I, mm -hmm. and if there was anything important to do with the patient, even if it was mine, they'd do it. The older ones? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I, I wasn't happy there. So where did you end up? And George lost his boss, Mr. Little, mm -hmm. and so that made a difference. It was two, a son and a son-in-law running the business. So one day we took the day off and we headed up this way, knowing there was Mary Hitchcock and the, uh, the garages, and he got a job right off at the garage in Hanover, and I went to work at Mary Hitchcock. So have you been at this location since then? We had this house built 58 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Our, old, our boy was three months old when we moved in. Oh, my heavens. Yeah. We've been here ever since. So was it as built up as it is now, or was it no, kind of no, a No, it building? wasn't. No. no, not at all. No, there was this. Uh, all the houses from and here to the stop. road you get that? was on this street. Of and there was there. only. Uh, there was none on. Only two on the other side. Three on the other side of the house, row, uh -huh. no. and then they no. added, and they no. added down below here, but they. So this was country. Yeah, it was country, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. but now it's, it's uh, it's still country, but it's. it's a, little been, a little closer together, country. Right. Yeah. I think right. we're the oldest and most and been here the longest of anybody else on this. Yeah, it's probably the case. Right. Either died or moved. Well, you two. Well, it seems like it was an awfully nice place to raise family. So, and did the kids go to the school right down here? Um, yes, they Off all the they went to Mount Lebanon, which is up on the back street. Yep. Uh, they went there for kindergarten to mm -hmm. third grade or fourth grade. Then they came to the Seminary Hill School, and then they went to the junior high school on Bank Street, and then they went to the high school that's there now. So that worked out pretty yeah. well. So now, you were a pretty modern family. You were both working. How did, right. did, you, how did you do the child care? Uh, well, our children, uh, the oldest is seven years older than the next. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then there's the two boys that are 15 months apart. Mm -hmm. And when, when I had little ones, I didn't work. Oh, I see. And there was no such thing as no. daycare. No, that's why I'm asking the yeah. question. And I, my parents didn't live near us to no. take care of children, and mm -hmm. I had no other relatives, you know. Right. No, I, I stayed home, and mm -hmm. when they got big enough to, I'd go and work part-time or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the uh, youngest girls were six and seven years younger than the boys. You know, it just it would get so you could put dessert on the table, and then the little one would come along, and you couldn't put the dessert. On. You know how you <laughs> yeah. put the dessert on, and they won't eat the main meal. Yeah. It would seem so I'd just get so I could begin to put the dessert on, and a little bit like Groundhog Day for you. Another little one. Yeah, we had three table. families. Yeah, it was like three That's different it. families. Very interesting. Fifty-eight year old rooster is fifty-eight because I know <laughs> sakes. Hey, 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 stop. <laughs> I named, I always said if I had a boy, he was going to be named Rooster. It's a very, it's a very fun name. I see yeah. why you like that. All, All right, right, let's get a little stop. more formal here. I'm going to make sure I don't miss up on anything. So we've got Go you, we've got you working, we've got you with a family started. And I guess it would be good to, right here, to ask you what your parents' names were. My parents was Clarence. She go, and my mother's name was Martha Dean. Martha Alice Dean Gold. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And uh, they, they uh, were they local people too? Uh, yes, they were. Uh, my mother, my mother was born in Grafton, and my father was born in Wilmot. 
and I don't know where and what we... That's okay. I th it just helps kind of get the lineup of your right. family because there are a lot of goats. And it's nice to see which branch you are. And we, we're, we're a family of, of seven. As I <laughs> There were seven that were eight. There were eight boys. No, nine. Eight, there was eight children that lived to grow up. Nine that grew up, right? No, eight. Eight to grow up. I had eight a family of eight that grew up. And uh, Lawrence and uh, wasn't in the picture with the with the seven group. Mm -hmm. We had the seven. We got the picture with the seven in the group. Wonderful. Yeah. But you have a picture of Lawrence and the two girls that died of diphtheria in 1921. Oh, oh that was a big event. Yeah. 1921, he yeah. lost two yeah. sisters. Wow. They were six and seven years old, I believe. That's very tough. And the mother had diphtheria. And Leonard, his brother Leonard, was a baby. And Lawrence and Ralph, they didn't catch it. The father didn't. His mother had it. And the two girls She had, had it, but she survived it. Yes. And it's the right. two girls died. Wow. It was tough on the young ones. Yeah. Were they young? Her baby, they were six and seven. Mm. She never got over that, they no. said. No. Mm. You don't. No. Do you remember your grandparents at all? Yes. I, my grandfather, I don't remember my grandfather Gold, because my grandfather Gold moved out west. I don't know just what year he moved, but he he, he went out west and and uh, and I don't know where they lived in Wilmot. Do you know why they went? Was it his, part his of the wife, adventure? His wife, uh, your grandmother, my grandmother died. Yeah, she died oh. uh, in Wilmot, and I don't know what year that was. But, uh, it was back in the, uh, before. But you remember, we you remember them coming with gifts. You said, didn't you? Before What's that? They left? Didn't they come with some gifts for you children before they left? Uh, that was when, uh, when Leonard, Leonard left with my uh, Leonard uh, left with his with his father. Your uncle Leonard. My uncle Leonard, yes. He left with my uh, grandfather, and they went to... Uh, Did they go out to find their fortune? Did they have some plan? Do you have any idea? Where'd they go? They went to... Well, nobody ever really knew what happened to them. Well, they found, they found my grandfather's grave out in... Oregon or Washington? No, no. It's Montana? Montana. Somewhere in Montana, I in guess it was. In recent years? Huh? In recent years? Yeah, mm -hmm. I found that. Amer uh, I guess Florence. Florence has been to that cemetery and, and found it. But, really? Uh, but I've never found out where it is. And Leonard, my uncle Leonard, went as far as Oregon, somewhere in the state of Washington. And, and uh, my, my folks got a... a a letter, or the town of Wilmot got a letter from from Washington about my uncle, but uh, but they want to know some, some more information about him, and uh, we did we didn't get the letter. The town clerk got it, and she finally she finally turned it over to uh, uh, one of the I guess. My brother, and he uh, he he passed it over to my father, and and, and then from there uh, they uh, they didn't have it any yeah didn't okay. have, good, good they didn't any recollection of where my uncle was, and so they never did yeah, find sometimes out. Sometimes you get to the no. dead end, but I bet there are a lot of things you remember, especially. I bet there are a lot of things you remember, especially when you contrast them to today. Are there any things that you remember, especially from your childhood, that seem complete contrast to the way young people operate today? Any fond memories from when you were a kid? How you spent your time? Skating to school. 
Huh? Skating to school. You used to skate to school, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I used to, one went where my folks' house was, the brook that went down back of my folks' house and went continued on down back of the, the on the meadow and goes back of the back of the schoolhouse and uh, uh, we used to they freeze over in the winter time and we used to skate from home from just go out there and, and skate down the brook until we get to the meadow and then we the meadow was all flooded over and we just skate all the way to the schoolhouse and uh, that, that sounds was, pretty wonderful. We remember that. Yeah, that was the one thing that I remember a lot. Of. Do you remember playing in the schoolyard, playing recess games out there? Oh yeah, I played. We had uh, trouble in the school and on the stove trouble. And I won't tell that story. Cause oh. <laughs> no, you better not. Oh. No. <laughs> because you, were, uh, you didn't talk very nice to Martha Ford. Oh. Or Martha Granite. Yeah, and uh, my he wanted to go in and watch what the guy was doing that fixing the stove, and oh. she told him to go play with the other children. Yeah, he, he, and he she didn't called, recognize that you had an engineer in your veins. That's right, because I've said to him over the years, how do you know how to do that? Well, I've just watched people do it. Yeah. Uh -huh, you have an eye for it. Well, so so from trouble. early on you knew you were going to be an engineer? It was always an interest, a mechanical engineer in particular? Um. You didn't recognize it, but you did it. No, no. That's how he got the job at Little's Garage. He went up there to work on it, to get something for his car. He needed work done on it. Oh, well, yeah, I went. And I went uh, he, uh, Mr. Little, came out and said, do you want a job? <laughs> yeah, he That's said, uh, I told him I wanted some front wheel bearings for my, my car. And he said, how do you know you need wheel bearings? I said, because I've, I've taken them off and checked them, and I know that they need to replace them. He says, well, drive, you just drive it down around the back of the building and drive it down the, what they call the wash stand, and I'll be down. He says, I haven't got a mechanic that could look at it, but he said, I'll be down and see, see if you need the bearings. If you do, I'll get the bearings for you out of the past room. And uh, so he, uh, I said, well, that'd be nice of you. And so I went down, parked my, my truck, uh, my car on his, on his uh, washstand and jacked it up and, and pulled the wheel, front wheels off and, and the wheel bearings all fell apart. I says, I guess you need some wheel bearings, so that's so he, he uh, that's when he asked me what I was doing, and I said, well, I'm going to school right now, at the end of a high school. He said, uh, well, when you get through end of a, he said, when you graduate, he says you come up now and see me. He said, and I'll think about giving you a job. And so I I did that, but meantime. Uh, it worked out that he, I didn't wait till I was through school. I went up during the summers when, and uh, worked summers for him, and then I knew I got a job after I graduated, and I did that. So, but I say I only stayed there until until uh, uh, just 1953, and in January of 53 we came up here to Hanover. So, we, so what did you do then? I was working at uh, the uh, Rogers Garage in Hanover as a, as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. right. and I, that, that, that was seven years of, of uh, working there. And then I decided, that even though we moved from New London up here, that uh, we, in the meantime, had built this house. but. Uh, which I decided, or I didn't decide it. A friend of mine said, well, why don't you go down to the powerhouse? He said, they, they need an operator at the powerhouse. And so that's how I got the job for Granite State Electric, going to work to, to, at the powerhouse. And uh, so I worked down there for 
30 years, seven months, and seven days. <laughs> it wasn't your favorite job? With, the, with the power company. <laughs> okay. we only, I only worked uh, uh, for nine years as, as the operator because they closed, closed the plant. Do you have a shop down here at the Powerhouse Mall? Yes, of course. So that's, and that that's big, where you worked. That big right. old brick building. Yeah, beautiful there. building. That's yeah. where the... Uh, it's the, the brick building part out on the next to the bridge, or right there by the river, mm -hmm. uh, that brick building was our power plant. We had two two generators in there: it was a thousand watt generator and a five hundred watt generator. And uh, when we had high water, I was I, I cut the generators off the off the line on the January of uh, of. Uh, December of uh, 15, 59? No, it was... Uh, 69. Um, the girls were born, weren't they? Yeah. So it this was, is a big storm uh, runoff? It was, yeah. It was October. Of, yeah. Hmm. Was it in October? October of 69. Oh. The girls were born... When I stayed there March until 69. October of 69. Well, that must have been a little exciting. Yeah. You yeah, cut it off because you were worried it was going to flood? High water. High water. Water was coming in. We couldn't, we couldn't handle it coming through the penstock. Ah. It plugged the penstock up so we couldn't, uh, so we had to cut the power off uh, coming through the, the power, gener through the generators because we, we just couldn't keep it. Keep it running. To hmm. Keep the water going through it. So was there any damage after that? Uh, not to, well, we lost through. we lost a penstock, uh, and they never they never started up the generators again. It was no. it, they closed it down hmm. completely. Yeah. Nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, As a result, October mostly of that storm, yeah. or, uh, or yeah, was it, it was, that it was natural? Due to, it was due time. to the storm. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's. And uh, I went to work from after I, after that I went to work for the for the uh, up at the uh, office as a meter man a meter reader bill collector and I I worked uh, for 15 years as a meter reader and bill collector down in Walpole and Charlestown area. Oh my, that was and, a distance. And the, that, that was a that was a good job. I I enjoyed that. It was, it was fifteen years of being my own boss, pretty much. I was I was given a truck to drive, and I would leave leave here at seven o'clock in the morning and come back be home by three o'clock in the afternoon. And I was reading meters for half a day, and bill collecting the other half. So. So you had a lot of different kinds of jobs. Well, yes. You met a lot of people. Yeah. Met a lot of people, got to know a lot of people. Got to know more people in Walpole and Charlestown area than they did in Lebanon. It's a very pretty area. Right. Yes, it is down there. It's very and that is that, that is built up so that I wouldn't know there'd be a lot of those places that I wouldn't even know where they that are. That might be a funny Sunday drive for you all. Sometime soon. But we do do or do that. you do that anyway? Oh, every year or two, he's got to go back. Yeah. And his old yeah. Roots. It would be. Ride, it would really. be nice to just go down and, and uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it in the winter time. Right. Uh, well, I would now with my. I've got a four-wheel drive truck now, but oh. uh, I could. I could do that all right. Now you're so handy. Do you have you always taken care of your own car mechanics, then as well, or? Well. I up until uh, just a few years ago, I was I could uh, do anything that had to be done on the vehicles. But when this this truck that I've got out here, it's too it's, fancy. Yeah, it's too much, too much to it. That uh, I I can put the gas into it and change the oil and change the tires on it. But I, as far as doing any mechanical work on it, I don't. I don't think I could do it. But I bet you took no. care of your vehicles yeah. better than the rest of us did right. for a long time. That's so. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned the war. That was huge. You mentioned that your folks 
and the, the toll it took with the diphtheria problem years back. I'm thinking what else may have happened in your lifetime. There was the depression. Well, that was, of course, a big that, deal. He remembers that well. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. What do you remember most that about that? That was back in the, in the 30s. Mm -hmm. and it was, uh, well, that was between the, uh, 29 and... October 29. Was well, you were a young man. What's that? Four, four years old. Yeah, oh, you I were was, very little. Yeah, I was five. Yeah. But you knew But that. you remember it. But I can remember the, the hurricane in 1938. Right. Yeah. And, but to uh, go back to the Depression, right. you remember how your folks couldn't pay the taxes, yeah. and they wanted mm -hmm. to take his horses away oh. that was his father's livelihood. Yeah. How horrible yeah. was yeah. that oh. with a family of eight children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was... That they was, didn't do it, we, but they threatened to. Yeah. Well, people, some people just had to do what they had to do. Yeah, but yeah. that, 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 that has taken the yeah. livelihood yes. away from feeding eight children. Oh, yes, yes. What were they supposed to do? I don't know. Hmm. That was, I know he's told me about that. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was, was, that was cruel. Yeah. So bad things happened. So how old were you in 38 when the big hurricane came 13 around? years old. Yeah, I bet you have a strong hmm. memory of that. Right. Yeah, I was. I do too. Yeah, no, we all. Yeah. I was eight. Yeah, she was eight years old. Uh -huh. Do you remember no. the effect on Wilmot, and maybe the where your creek was, the creek that ran down behind your back, back of your house, when you were young and growing up in Wilmot? Oh, he remembers playing out in the storm. Yeah. All right, let's hear what you remember. What's that? You you've told me about playing out in the storm. It's oh. one that you didn't drown. Yeah, well, the, the river was, uh, was up there pretty high, and, and just above my folks' house was where the bridge was. There was a bridge there, and then there was a bridge up by Pedrick Road. And the bridge went out at Pedrick Road. I think it went out there, and it also went out the one just above my folks. But the bro I don't know if that did go out. Maybe they, they didn't, maybe it was because I know that the river came, when it got to the, to the, it was so high that it went down before it went under the bridge, it went to the left-hand side of the bridge. Oh, it built a new uh, path for itself. Perhaps. It went down the road. It went down the road. Wow. And uh, it went... Which was a dirt road then, was it? Yeah, it was a dirt road there. And uh, uh, when it didn't wash the road out, but it washed the d ditch across the road. And uh, we kids used to... We, it was raining and everything, you know, and we, we was out there playing in the rain. And... Uh, Playing in the water in the road. Well, little did we know that uh, it washed out so bad across the road that we didn't know it till the next day when we got up and uh, got outdoors and see what had happened. And a ditch in front of my folks' house had washed down about six feet deep, so that uh, we, if we'd have gone into that ditch. We, we would have been down down the river. Away. Yeah, imagine. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine. Imagine yeah. the mother in the house with those kids out there running around. Yeah. Well, nobody really knew what that no, story was they, about. My folks told me to stay in the house. Oh, did they? They at least knew to do that. And stay, because of course, we, back then, you didn't know this hurricane was coming. No, no, it was not. Nobody knew. No, no. And that was the, that was the same. But my folks told me, my mother said, you stay in the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm going over to the store because we, my folks had the store, the oh, right. general store right there, in Grafton uh -huh. Center. But I didn't stay in the house. I went out onto the front porch. I think my brother did too. We went out and the wind was so strong, we couldn't get back up the porch and get into the house. Oh, my just... mother had to come out and get us, get us back into the wow. house.
we were naughty. We didn't stay in the house. No, we but you cold. had a feel for the power of the wind and the water, then, didn't you? And all that evening, it just roared and roared. The lights were out. Oh, boy. We just sat around the dining room table, and <laughs> my father and brother played, I've forgotten what they played for cards or something. And we just sat there with a kerosene lamp and listen to that hurricane roar for a long time. I don't remember about what time we went to bed or anything. No. I just remember hearing that roar. Yeah, that I wasn't worried, though. My folks no. were calm, and so I wasn't worried about it. Yeah, we rarely have a storm that you can actually remember the sound of. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were a kid, who do you remember being your best buddies? Say that again. Who were your best friends? growing up in Wilmot. Do you remember the kids you used to play with by name? Well, of course, my brother... Of course, you had a lot of brothers. Well, I had one who was a year older than I was, and then there was, there was Leslie, and, and Leonard was... Uh, uh, see, there was... One was born in 20, born, uh, 21, and the other was born in 22. And Paul was born in 24, so see, it was, we were all... And what then, was their last name? Or was that all your kids? Uh, my Those family. Are all the, okay, this was, uh, these are your own brothers. Well, own by the way, family, his mother yeah. was a school yeah. teacher. Uh -huh. Yeah, his we had them, the and uh, uh, pretty much we, we grew up with uh, uh, the Gregory family, which is, lived just below us. They was... They were there during the 38, during the hurricane of 38. And uh, I believe they lived down there before the Solomons did. And, uh, then there was Roland Grace, who was, uh, he lived uh, on the hill just above the, up above where Wilbur Grace were, lives now, Wilbur was his brother. And and, and right. how where did you fit in age wise with? Well, uh, well, Roland Grace was. Uh, uh, Roland was in the age was was maybe Paul. I would say he was in. His age. Was he a little older than Yeah, a little older than Paul, or maybe, uh, maybe a little younger. I don't know about that. But I know that we used to, we never got, we never played too much with, with uh, the neighborhood. No. No, it was, it was, my father was always out haying or, or doing farm work, and, and we younger ones was, would go and help him on haying and, and it, like up at the granny farm. And, uh, and uh, that was, uh, that was in the, uh, let's see, I think that would have been in the, about the 30, Oh, it had to be after after grammar school. No, it wasn't either. It, was, right. in it would 1930s, be in the 1930s. The late 30s. The late 30s. It was up to the granny farm with Paul and myself, and it was uh, my my father, and uh, he would. That's why I they had those horses. That was that was uh, my my father's team, and. Uh, uh, Paul remembers them better than I do. Paul has uh, uh, cattle. He had a, a pair of oxen that he's, he raised himself. And uh, uh, he has several pictures of his teams of, of oxen that he had. My dad used to have a year oxen uh, way back before he had his horses, he used to have teams of oxen that he uh, worked with. So. Was he in construction? Pardon? Was your father in construction? 
Uh, no, he was a farmer. Mostly farming. He was farming and, uh, only. And so. logging. Okay, And he logging. did logging and... Uh, with his horses. Yeah, with his... And he does so that's it. what he did in the winter? Yeah, and he, he used to uh, cut... He would uh, haul wood, haul wood for uh, pulp wood or mm -hmm. lumber out for for uh, Roy Emery over at Elkins. Oh, interesting. Yeah, when he used to he used to do a lot of lumbering, and uh, uh, my father would would haul it out like he was over in, on a higher farm. And he, he cut all the, they had somebody to cut it, and he he would haul it down with his team down to the, what they call the landing on the road going to Eagle Pond, where they, the, the trucks could come in and pick it up and take it to Elkins, to, to his uh, sawmill, so. Wonderful, wonderful. Did he? Did he work up on Cadogan Mountain at all? Cadogan Mountain. Didn't he go and he worked up and in, stay in a camp during the week? Up in Danbury. It was in Danbury? Up in Danbury. And he used to work for Roy Emery on logging, uh, cutting wood, pulp, not pulp wood, uh, uh, firewood. He wouldn't cut it. He just somebody else would cut it and have it four foot length, and he'd he'd haul it out to like I say out to haul it from from Danbury to Elkins for uh, my dad. All, all he did was haul it out from from back in the woods right. out to where they pick it up with the trucks. So he did the first leg. Right. Well, yeah. that was a good that was a good way. Of Dividing the job. George said right. that his father was always very kind to his horses. Is that right? He so took he would very good care of his he horses. He had a gentle hand with animals. He he was very kind to them, took very good care of his horses. Oh. But my mother said many times that she was so glad when the tractors came and the horses weren't being used anymore because so many were abused and oh. and she felt sorry for so many of these work horses that she was glad with tractors came along. Mm, interesting. But of course tractors have done more damage in the in the woods yes. than the horses ever did. Yes. And people still hire out folks who will yeah. do it by horse on purpose for that. Yeah. 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 Interesting that they had they had that special gift for having a soft spot for the animals. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I think you do you guys do too. You hear the the dogs in the background, you see the big cats in their little nest, you see the chickens out back. Have you had any other animals to date? Ducks. You used to have ducks. Did you have ducks? Yeah. George put a, um, an old uh, um, bathtub in the ground oh. out back so they would have a pool to, to swim in. That is sweet. We didn't yeah. have anything else. Yeah. Then when I got rid of my ducks, I got rid of the bathtub and then I filled the Filled in the uh, the yard, the the filled in the hole the where the bathtub was. And then I remodeled the the building so that I could use it for the storage. And I put I put a, a whole big maple tree into it for firewood. And uh, after I cut the one the big maple tree out in the backyard here. And I cut that all up with a little small uh, chainsaw and split split it up to firewood, and I used that for my shop, for a little stove in my shop in the back of my barn out there. You have a red barn, you probably yes, I did. I did get to see it. Yeah, yep. well, I saw your yeah. chicken house, and then I looked around and saw your red barn. It's right. awfully handy having a barn. Yeah. I yeah. built that myself. Did you? Yeah. Well, nice. Going. I built this kitchen here and the and the porch on the end of the house. You should I have built, built the whole house, actually. This was really this was the end of the house right right, oh, right there. It was very small. Wonderful. And I, I, we said, well, this we either going to have another house or we're going to do something. <laughs> so, well, I don't know. When you're young, you forget to look into all the details. And I, and we'd looked at this plan of this house for a number of years. 
when we were going together, we looked at the plan, and then when we had it built, it never occurred to me, check on the size of the rooms. Never occurred to me about the size of the rooms. You huh. just thought people were smart and they wouldn't build a house that the rooms weren't adequate. And uh, so these bedrooms that we have are too small. Oh. Uh, too small. But anyway, he built on, because this was the dining room. This is here. This end of the living room was the dining room. And my this kitchen was no bigger. Well, many old pantries were see, bigger than what This my is where was. the dining room from. Oh, I see. So you really have rebuilt the house. So I tore out the partition that was down to here. <laughs> and and uh, left just the closet. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And then he built that big kitchen. And then he added and it on the up, oh. The, oh, up man. there. Well, you've got a pretty good size house now. Now it makes well, it a little taxes, more than you want. The taxes are bad enough. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, we've had I've had a wonderful time hearing about your well, thank life. You for thank coming you so up. much for letting me come yeah, over. Well, his brother Paul and Mary Lou. His brother is Paul's the only other. That's right. Yeah, right. you got the two yeah, left. Just the two of us. Yeah. The, Holding up the, the family. Last of the family. And yeah. They know a yeah. lot about. Well, Mary Lou knows a lot. She has a lot of information. Well, that'd be fine. Well, I hope I get a chance to talk to everybody at some point, but I sure enjoyed talking to you today. So thank you, Jean. This, this is my baby.